Now we're going to have a quick look at DNA replication. And I, I suppose first we need to stop and just think about why do cells need to replicate their DNA? Well, every single cell in your whole body has a copy of the same DNA. It doesn't use all, all parts of it. It only uses it, it, it only reads the sections it needs to. Um, but it has an entire copy of all of your DNA in every cell. Um, so every time a, um, you know, a cell reproduces and to produce all your cells, it needed to copy that DNA. Um, so this process has happened millions and millions and millions of times, and it's continuing to happen in all, all your cells all around your body. And it's important that this process happens exactly. Um, we can't afford to have too many mix-ups or mutations in the DNA, otherwise the cells aren't going to be able to function properly. So let's have a look, really, really super simplistic view of what's going on in de -rep DNA replication. Now, rem imagine that we have a double-stranded molecule. Okay, this is our DNA molecule made of two strands. What happens during cell reproduction is it actually unwinds and splits in, 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 and replicates and splits into two strands. And so what we end up with is this first strand, which we call the parent strand, um, forming two new strands. And those two new strands will form next to them. And those two new strands, you can imagine, are going to be complementary to the original strand. So this, this strand here will be exactly the same as this strand here, and this strand here will be exactly the same as this strand here. Okay. Uh, when we're talking about things, we call these the parent strands, and this is the parent strand here, this is another parent strand here, and these two here are the daughter strands. And what will have happen next is another replication will occur. In this case, these four strands will become the parent strands of the next replication and will have four new daughter strands, all of them being complementary to the parent strands. And that way we're now ending up with four exact copies of the strands we ended up with at the start. We call this replication, semi-conservative replication. Um, it, it conserves one of the original strands. So um, every time there's a reproduction, it one of the original strands remains. And that's how we can ensure that we have an exact copy. And, and really, we now that we see how it happens in that, that simple version, we'll, we'll start to look at things a bit more complex. Uh, firstly, it's an unwinding of these strands that occurs. Um, and, and this a molecule actually has to unwind for the new new double helixes to form. Okay, in this diagram we're showing a single strand unwinding to form two new strands. This diagram is pretty well showing the same thing to, um, uh, that this original strand unwinding to form two new strands. Um, this area here is called the replication fork. Uh, it's where um, the, the strands are unzipping and spreading apart. And I'm just going to remind you that where this, the strands are unzipping is in these weak hydrogen bonds in between the two strands. It's a weakest point, um, and it's a bit that can just uh, pull apart quite easily compared to the other molecules in DNA. So looking at this, this is our replication fork here. Um, what, to, to allow these strands to um, pull apart, there's actually a small break in the molecule that occurs, um, and, and that, that's just temp temporarily. Um, it allows these um, arms to spread apart and swivel apart so that they, there's enough room and uh, space for them to unwind and replicate. Okay, and what we're seeing here is that um, as we're forming the, the new daughter strands along the parent strands, which are complementary, we're adding new nucleotides. And the building of this has to happen in a particular direction. And for one strand, it's happening uh, going upwards, and the other strand, it's happening going downwards. Okay, And it'll be using free nucleotides in the, in the solution or around the cell um, to come in and bind there. And there's particular enzymes that we're going to look at in a second. The direction of these um, is specific to the orientation of the, the, of the nucleotides and the, the strand. Um, these molecules are built from 5' prime end towards the 3' prime end. OK, now let's, let's actually have a look at these, how these two strands replicate and, um, and have a look why the orientation, the 3', three prime, 5' prime end, is, is all important to these nucleotides. So first let's look at what we've got here. We've got two strands. These blue strands here are the parent strands. Uh, the anti-parallel. One's um, running 5' prime to 3' prime, the other's running 3' prime to 5' prime. 
Now, as we build the new strands, um, the nucleotides are laid down, and they're laid down um, in a direction from 5 prime to 3 prime which means that this strand here, which is called the leading strand, can just continually get laid down. The other strand needs to get laid in this direction here. Okay, And, and that, that's, that's fine. Um, the nucleotides, nucleotides can just be added, but it can't happen continuously. Um, because what happens as we unwind, we need to start a new segment. Okay, and add a new segment to there, and we need to join that new segment up. Okay, now um, th these new these little segments um, that occur are called Ozaki fragments. Okay, um, one strand here, which we call the leading strand, okay, can just continually have nucleotides added and form a nice complementary strand. The other needs to be formed in s little fragments one bit at a time just add it on and as it unzips we just add an extra little um, section of, of the DNA molecule and each of these has to be bound together um, and we use an enzyme called DNA ligase to join them okay so Ozaki fragments and DNA ligase on the lagging strand and just continuous replication on the leading strand so looking at this in a diagram, um, we see here the replication fork, um, the leading strand being built from 5' prime to 3' prime direction can just have continuous replication and we have DNA polymerase um, is, a, is the enzyme that's adding those nucleotides. Uh, DNA polymerase, it's, it's forming a polymer from DNA and ace on the end is telling me that it's an enzyme. Um, the other enzymes we have involved here uh, is on the lagging strand and we have these small fragments, again they have to be brought in small fragments, as it unzips we build a new little, little fragment. Um, the, the nucleotides are being added again by DNA polymerase, um, but it's DNA ligase that's joining uh, these Ozaki fragments on the lagging strand. Um, this replication fork up here, um, there's an enzyme called helicase um, that splits apart these fragments. And here's a really neat diagram that sort of shows it all together. Um, we, we, we have uh, parent strands up here uh, running anti-parallel. Um, we have our daughter strands being added, um, both being built from 5' prime to 3' prime, and from 5' prime down to 3'. Prime. We have them being split apart by helicase. Uh, we have DNA polymerase building the strand um, in, in both directions, adding those nucleotides. We have ligase uh, joining uh, the, the various Ozaki fragments. And we also have another one here which we didn't mention earlier, is these little uh, starting, starting um, nucleotides. And they start off as RNA uh, they're formed by RNA polymerase, polymerase and they are RNA primers and there's these little primers that just start the Ozaki fragments each time okay the the, the, the RNA molecules and as they're joined up by DNA ligase they're basically replaced by um, the, the DNA the DNA nucleotides that, that need to be there so looking at overall, I suppose uh, one strand gets built in this direction, the other strand, the lagging strand, gets built in, in small segments in the opposite direction, but the overall direction of replication is in the same direction up the strand. Okay, good luck with your look at DNA replication.